Okay, let's unpack this. You know that feeling when you haven't slept enough? That fuzzy head, the drag, just everything mm -hmm. feels a bit harder. We all know sleep is important, right? But how often do we really uh, stop and think about what's actually going on when sleep goes really wrong? Or, mm -hmm. you know, when not getting enough isn't just a one-off thing, but it's chronic. Yeah, it's so easy to just brush off being tired as like part of modern life. Everyone's yeah. tired. Yeah. But these sources we're digging into today, they paint a much, much more serious picture. It's not just feeling fatigued. Right. It's about long-term widespread impacts on your fundamental health and, well, how your brain works. And that's exactly what we're doing in this deep dive. We want to pull back the curtain on what happens when sleep becomes a persistent issue. Yeah. We're drawing key insights from some really important sources. One's a U.S. government site looking at sleep loss and disorders as, frankly, a public health problem. And the other is a paper from a neurosciences journal focusing specifically on the cognitive side, what sleep deprivation does to your thinking. Yeah, our goal here is really to pull out the crucial bits in these materials to give you a clear sense of the uh, the true scale of this and the serious downstream effects, effects on your body and your mind. OK, so let's dive in. First up, just how big is this problem? I mean, the numbers in one source, they really jumped out at me. They are pretty staggering, aren't they? According to that government source, the estimate is somewhere between 50 and 70 million Americans suffer chronically from a sleep or wakefulness disorder. 50 to 70. Million. Million. That's, yeah. that's not just a few tired people. That sounds like a massive public health issue right there. It really frames it that way. And it also highlights how complex it is. The sources point out there are something like 90 distinct sleep disorders recognized. 90? Wow. Yeah, but... While they're all different, they tend to show up in three main ways. You're either incredibly sleepy during the day. Right. The excessive daytime sleepiness. Exactly. Or you have major trouble actually falling asleep or staying asleep insomnia, basically. Or the third one is experiencing abnormal stuff during sleep, like sleepwalking, sleep apnea, that kind of thing. So it's this whole spectrum. Can't sleep, strange things happen when you do sleep, or just exhausted all the time. And the consequences, the sources really stress this, they go way beyond just feeling tired. Way beyond. The U.S. government source talks about visible consequences and less visible ones. Hmm. The visible ones can be genuinely catastrophic. The source actually points to errors in judgment, potentially linked to sleep issues, as contributing factors in things like the space shuttle Challenger disaster. Wow. Using the Challenger, that really hammers home the potential immediate danger. Impaired judgment from lack of sleep isn't trivial. It puts it in really stark real-world terms. It absolutely does. But, you know, as dramatic as those kinds of visible events are, the sources emphasize that the less visible consequences are actually far more widespread, more insidious. Well, they quietly chip away at pretty much every key indicator of public health you can imagine. Mortality rates, uh, morbidity, how much illness there is, performance at work or school, accident rates, just your overall quality of life, even things like family well-being and health care costs. So, okay, a car crash because someone dozed off, it's tragically clear-cut, right? You'd see the link. Exactly. It's acute. But these other consequences, things like developing obesity or high blood pressure, they creep up on you. They develop slowly, maybe over years of chronic poor sleep or an untreated disorder, the sources make a really strong case based on the research they cite that this isn't minor. Chronic sleep loss has profound, widespread, and long-lasting negative effects. Okay, this next point you mentioned from one of the sources, it Whoa. sounds like a real shift in thinking about sleep. It is, yeah. It's a crucial insight. One source explicitly says that recent research has basically overturned the dogma that sleep loss has no health effects apart from daytime sleepiness. Wait, hang on. So scientists used to think the main downside of bad sleep was just feeling sleepy the next day. And now they know it's causing actual, like, physical health damage. That's pretty much it. A huge shift in understanding. It means we absolutely cannot treat sleep deprivation lightly. These sources argue it's fundamental maintenance for almost every system in your body. And they list specific systems, don't they? Getting less than that magic number, usually cited as seven hours, isn't just making you grumpy. It hits multiple body systems hard. That's right. They specifically point to harmful effects on the cardiovascular system. So your heart and blood vessels. Okay. The endocrine system, which handles hormones. Your immune system, how you fight off bugs. And of course, the nervous system, including your brain. And the list of specific health problems they link to insufficient sleep less than seven hours, it's pretty long and serious, isn't it? What kind of conditions are we talking about? Well, 
Based on the evidence reviewed in these sources, mm -hmm. consistently getting too little sleep is associated with a higher risk or worsening symptoms mm -hmm. of obesity, both in adults and kids, mm -hmm. diabetes, and impaired glucose tolerance, so problems processing sugar, cardiovascular disease, and hypertension heart issues, high blood pressure, right? also anxiety symptoms, depressed mood, and interestingly, even increased alcohol use is mentioned as being linked. Wow. That list, it really paints a picture. Sleep deprivation isn't just making you tired, it's acting like a systemic stressor. It undermines key bodily functions, boosts your risk for major chronic diseases, and hits your mental well-being too. Exactly. It's not just a symptom of being busy or stressed. It looks like a potential root cause or at least a significant contributor to broader health issues. It definitely moves sleep into that essential category, doesn't it? Right up there with diet and exercise, but maybe the one we tend to neglect the most. I think that's fair to say, yeah. Often overlooked. Speaking of overlooking things, let's zoom in specifically on the brain. Beyond the general health stuff, what does being chronically sleep deprived do to how we actually think? Our cognition. Yeah, the neurosciences source is really clear here. It states pretty unequivocally that lack of sleep, or sleep deprivation, SD as they call it, causes adverse changes in cognitive performance. And it's not just a subjective feeling, it results in measurable drops in function, impaired abilities across several really critical areas. So that brain fog, the struggle to concentrate when you're exhausted, that's literally your brain not firing on all cylinders. Pre precisely. The sources list core cognitive functions that take a significant hit from sleep deprivation. Things like memory. Okay, memory. Makes sense. Attention span definitely suffers. Your overall alertness levels, your judgment calls, and critically, your decision-making abilities. You're all the things we rely on constantly, basically, from driving a car safely to doing complex work. Absolutely. And the sources also touch on the underlying biology a bit. The regulatory processes, like the circadian clock, our internal timing system. Right, the body clock. And the homeostatic process, that's basically the buildup of sleep pressure the longer you're awake. Sleep deprivation messes with these, especially the homeostatic drive. The longer you go without sleep, the more out of whack that system gets. And there was something really fascinating mentioned about brain cleaning during sleep. The glymphatic system. I'd never heard that term before. Oh, yes. The glymphatic system. It's uh, essentially the brain's unique waste disposal system. It's not like the lymphatic system in the rest of the body. Instead, it uses these channels around blood vessels to kind of flesh out metabolic waste products, toxins that build up while you're awake. So wait, while you're sleeping, your brain is literally taking out the trash. That's the concept presented in the source, yes. Hmm. And the implication is pretty significant. If you don't get enough sleep, especially those deeper stages, that crucial cleaning process might be impaired. It might not run effectively. Which could mean what? a buildup of harmful stuff in the brain over time if you're chronically sleep deprived. That sounds pretty concerning. It is a really significant potential consequence the sources point towards. And it underscores why getting sufficient stages of sleep, both NREM and REM, is so vital. Right. It's not just total hours, but the quality and the different phases. Exactly. The sources emphasize you need enough time in both deep restorative NREM sleep and the REM sleep associated with dreaming and cognitive processing. Both are crucial for different aspects of brain health and function, and cutting sleep short disrupts that balance. Okay, so we know there are tons of sleep disorders, like 90, you said. We obviously can't cover all of them. No way. But the sources do highlight a few common ones that give a good sense of the range of problems people face. Obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, seems like a big one. It's definitely a major focus. The sources yeah. estimate it affects a pretty significant chunk of people, maybe at least 4% of middle-aged men, 2% of women, possibly more. And risk factors are things like obesity, getting older. Yeah, obesity, increasing age, being male are key risk factors mentioned, though they do note it's probably underdiagnosed in women. And the sources strongly link OSA to cardiovascular problems, right? Because of the breathing interruptions. Absolutely. Those repeated pauses in breathing put a lot of strain on the cardiovascular system. That link is well established in the literature they discuss. Then there's insomnia, just not being able to sleep. Probably the one people complain about most often, even if it's not formally diagnosed. For sure. And the sources say it's about twice as common in women as men. And it gets more common as people age. Things like stress, other medical or psychiatric issues, shift work, all listed as common risk factors. What about restless leg syndrome, RLS? That sounds unpleasant. It does. It's described as a common movement disorder that really messes with sleep. 
potentially affects 5% or more of people. Like insomnia, it's more common in older adults and women, including during pregnancy. The sources suggest a possible connection to iron deficiency may be affecting dopamine pathways and also mentioned a likely genetic component. Oh, okay. And then there are the things that happen while you're asleep, parasomnias, like sleepwalking. That's the category, yes. Things like confusional arousals when waking up or sleepwalking itself. The sources note these are actually more common in kids than adults, and sleepwalking seems to run in families, suggesting a genetic link there too. The sources even briefly mention something incredibly serious, SID's sudden infant death syndrome. Yes, they touch on risk factors associated with SIDs. Things like the baby's sleeping position sleeping on the stomach was a known risk, though campaigns have helped reduce that. Also, maternal smoking or drug use, low birth weight, and maybe even a family history of things like sleep apnea. And finally, just having other health problems like chronic pain or even just being sick with the flu, that can mess up your sleep too. Definitely. The sources point out that various medical conditions can significantly alter sleep patterns, often fragmenting sleep or changing the balance between NREM and REM stages. It just reinforces how interconnected sleep is with everything else health-wise. One problem often feeds the other. Okay, so let's try and pull all these different threads together. We've talked about the huge scale of the problem, the really wide-ranging health effects, the hit to cognitive function, the sheer variety of disorders. Stepping back, what's the big takeaway message from these sources for, you know, for you listening right now and maybe for us as a society? I think the most powerful message, cutting across everything, is that sleep is absolutely not just downtime. It's not a luxury you can afford to cut back on without paying a price. These sources present it as a fundamental biological need, a crucial pillar holding up both your physical health and your ability to think clearly. Yeah, they make a really compelling case that chronic sleep loss and untreated sleep disorders aren't just, you know, personal struggles making individuals tired. They frame it as a major pervasive public health problem with profound, widespread, and this seems cum cumulative negative effects that build up over time. Absolutely. And ignoring these issues, or just trying to tough it out with caffeine, the sources argue that comes at a very real cost, not just to your own health down the line, increasing your risk for all those conditions we talked about, but also to society through safety issues, lost productivity, higher health care burdens, lower quality of life. It feels like this deep dive, looking at the evidence presented in these specific sources, really elevates the conversation beyond just oh, I'm tired, mm. it lays out the systematic, serious consequences. It's a powerful, data-driven argument for why sleep matters so much. It definitely leaves you thinking differently about that sleep debt, doesn't it? How those consistently missed hours or those nights tossing and turning, they aren't just making you feel rough today. They could be quietly impacting your long-term health and your cognitive sharpness in ways you might not even consciously connect. So maybe the provocative thought to leave everyone with, building directly on what these sources detail about the sheer scale and severity of the consequences, is this. Given everything we now understand, everything these sources lay out about sleep's fundamental role and the serious risks of neglecting it, are we really taking it seriously enough? As individuals making choices every day, and maybe more importantly, as a society shaping work schedules, school start times, healthcare priorities, are we truly recognizing and addressing sleep as the critical public health issue these sources suggest it is?